Hi there, this is Custom Force back here with a new video and today in this video I will be talking about overclocking your phone components like CPU, GPU and display. I will also be clearing your doubts related to the safety issues of overclocking these components. I will be talking about this one by one. So without any delay, let's get into it. First talking about the CPU overclocking. As per my information, CPU cannot be overclocked on Snapdragon 845 and above phones using custom kernels. It's because Snapdragon chipsets including 845 and above use secure bootloader. Hence no one can bypass that even using custom kernels. Some kernels may claim of overclocking your phone's CPU and even if you use CPU Z app, you will see the CPU gets overclocked, but in reality, it just changes the frequency values. The truth is that the CPU will run on the stock frequency only. To get the CPU overclocked on these chipsets, it must be supported by the manufacturer, meaning Qualcomm. Without that, it's not possible as of now. Even the no gravity kernel developer tried to add an OC build for CPU, but in reality, when it does not work, he removed it. I hope that everything is clear about overclocking CPU on your device. Now let's move towards GPU overclocking. Unlike the CPU, you can overclock GPU on any phone using custom kernels if it supports overclocking. There are many flagship Qualcomm chips that supports GPU overclocking. This means you can overclock your GPU frequency by about 100 to 150 megahertz if it supports overclocking with custom kernels. The GPU frequency gain after overclocking may be different for different processors. Now talking about safety regarding overclocking of GPU. In my opinion, GPU overclocking is safe. Why do I consider it safe? It's because it just overclocks your frequency to about 100 to 150 megahertz which is not a very big number. It will obviously produce somewhat more heat as compared to the stock frequency while gaming. About 3 to 4 degrees Celsius increase in the GPU temperature as compared to the stock frequency. Another thing is that GPU frequencies are adjustable. This means the frequency is adjust according to the tasks. Meaning it will switch to the maximum frequency while gaming to provide a boost in the performance and switch to the normal frequency while doing normal works. Moreover, using any kernel manager, you can also customize the frequencies as per your requirement. In this way, we can also get a better performance at minimal cost of battery. Hence, I consider GPU overclocking safe. Now moving towards the most interesting and most asked question that is is display overclocking safe or not before we get into display overclocking we need to understand what is display overclocking if you don't know it's overclocking your display refresh rate to about 5 to 10 hertz note that the display overclocking capacity may differ for different devices and display panels like the poco f1 comes shipped with three kinds of display panels. Display overclocking support for your device may differ with each panel. Due to this, most of the people can go up to 65 FPS meaning 65 Hz refresh rate only on POCO F1. Next thing what we need to know that most of the games available in the market including PUBG and COD do not give more than 60 FPS on any phone. Even on 120 Hz including the OnePlus smartphone and the ASUS ROG smartphones. This means even if you overclock your display using any custom kernels, you won't be getting more than 60 FPS on these games. Only the PUBG Mobile Chinese version that is Game for Peace supports 120 FPS. As of now, PUBG Global version does not support. Now there are many tricks like changing the values of active.sev file circulating on YouTube or the market which claims of uncapping more than 60 FPS on PUBG. 
First of all, I do not recommend using any other tricks which violates PUBG rules. Any process that modifies PUBG data will void the rules of PUBG game. Hence, I don't recommend using any of these tricks. It may lead to banning or suspension of your account. Moreover, using these tricks is not a solution for that. Next point is that if you overclock your display to about 5 to 7 FPS for normal usage, you won't see any major change. While gaming, it may become very useful, but only when apps provide more than 60 FPS and it does provide constantly on flagship level phones. Like in Poco F1, even if you use custom kernels and overclock your GPU and land at bootcamp, you will see FPS drops. The FPS may drop to about 53 to 55 easily on bootcamp. If the game does not provide you constant 60 FPS because the game is not optimized, you will only see more major FPS drops with overclocking of display. Like if you overclock your display to 65Hz meaning 65 FPS, you may face constant drop to about 53 FPS which will ruin your gameplay. Overclocking display is useful only when your game and device is able to run on more than 60 FPS continuously. PUBG can't even run on 60 FPS constantly on many flagship devices. So leave about overclocking the display. If you consider my opinion, I don't recommend using custom kernels to overclock display on POCO F1 because it's not worth it. Moreover, overclocking your display will consume more battery than usual. Hence, at last, I wanna conclude that overclocking display is not a good deal in my opinion. You do something when you get benefits of that. With the overclocking of display, I don't see any major benefits that will change your gaming experience on POCO F1. If you ask me whether overclocking display is safe or not, I don't know. If you consider Lauren developer's opinion, then use it at your own risk. With this video, I do not blame any of the kernel developers work. I just wanted to share my opinions on overclocking, whether it's display, GPU or CPU. I hope you found the video helpful. If you do, please hit the like button. And if you are new to the channel, please subscribe and do share this video as much as you can. I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.